Hello and welcome to another video for Intellisaurus. In this video we're going to connect all these wires together um, and then possibly turn the robot on for the first time. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, run these wires for the neck and head. I could have done this in the last video but I'm just going to do it at the beginning of this this video because it's just a little easy, it's not difficult to do here. I'm going to run these through this hole in the front here and then underneath the plate there and then come up the hole in the center along with the other motors. A little easier to grab those with tweezers. Now those come up through the there, the center. And then the motor that's coming through the plastic hole there gets mounted down. Like that. I'm gonna go ahead and screw that motor in so it doesn't come off again. I've got the mounting screws that I set aside from all of the motors. When I first unpackaged them, I took all their mounting screws out. All right, let's start connecting wires. I'm going to do the Arduino last, uh, just because I'm going to, so otherwise I'm going to start here at the front of the robot and work my way back. Um, the, so the first thing is this infrared sensor on the front here. And you want to make sure you get these pins right. If you, you haven't used the exact model that I've used, just make sure you get these pins right. Setting 5 volts um, where it shouldn't be is going to um, generally, generally ruin the part, and you'll have to replace it. So for my part, for this part here, I have very carefully made note. The top pin is ground, the middle pin is the 5 volt supply, and the lower pin is the signal. And I have wired the whole robot so that red is always 5 volts. It's just useful to do. I would make the whole robot where black is ground, but there's just not enough convenient black wires. So I use gray, uh, sorry, brown often for ground as well. So I don't use gray, brown, or black for anything other than those. This purple wire is what we ran earlier as the signal wire. And so it goes on the bottom. I'm not going to connect the, um, the Raspberry Pi goes in here. That'll be a whole other video. So we're going to skip that by. Um, we're going to do the motors later too. So right now I am going to connect the um, sensor in the middle, the motion sensor at the center. Um, if we take a shot straight down the middle, the motion sensor, all its pins are labeled. So we can see which is which. We are connecting these four wires here, which is, a, remember, our I2C bus. And again, the red wire is five volts, the brown wire is ground, and we just kind of have to decide for ourselves what the yellow wire is and what the orange wire is. So we're gonna just say for our, for our robot that the orange wire is the, um, the SDA line and the, the yellow wire is the um, SCL line. And the SDA is signal data line, and the SCL is the signal clock line. All right. So I'm going to connect these real quick so they're labeled. Five volts, and I'll show you a shot of this in a second. So there we go. If I could just get a shot down in there, the red line's going to VCC, which is five volts. The ground is going to brown. SCL is yellow. SDA is orange. Now I'm going to do the same thing over here. This, if you remember, is our same line, our I2C bus, and those are also labeled. This edge, I'm pretty sure that your um, controller card will also have those labeled. More than likely these match for you with your board, but double check the labeling. Red is 5 volts to the logic on the board. It's not the power to the motors. Remember, the power to the motors are coming through this green block over here, this green block over here. If we wanted to power the motors through this line over here, we would use this last pin here. That's why it says V++. That's power to the motors. But we're actually using this over here um, because this has a protection circuit on it. It's just a better way to connect 
your power to motors for, for this particular board, in my opinion. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do all the motors now, clean this up a little bit. So I am going to take all the motor lines. These are all the back motors, of which there should be four plus the tail, so that's five. And then up front, there should also be six. All of these wires come to this motor controller board right down here in the center with all those pin connectors. But I am going to take each of these and sort of braid them, just twist them. I mean, you could braid them if you were so inclined, but I'm definitely going to twist them. There are two reasons I twist them. One is it makes the whole thing neater and tidier, but more importantly, it helps the signal. These, all these lines are sending very similar signals together for all the different motors. And so each of these long lines, which are much longer than I would prefer, but we're buying these pre-done, act like mini antenna to each other. And so by twisting them together like this, um, the signals cancel each other out. Sort of like a twisted pair, if you've ever sort of thought about that. And I could, I could be better about this. I could braid these or do something fancy. That part is totally up to you. And remember, we labeled each one. And so each motor should be labeled that we did in, in an earlier video. And then on our board, each of these um, connectors is just numbered zero on up. So we're going to start with the number zero, which I happen to have right here. The order, uh, sorry, so the order matters here. I'm going to put this first one on, and these, they're all going to be exactly the same, but it matters. I've got the number facing the camera here because, again, this brown line is ground. Center line is um, power, 5 volts, uh, to the motor in this case, and then the orange line is signal in this case. On almost all of these bo boards, you'll notice that they have also color-coded the actual connectors with black, red, and yellow. And so red is in the middle, black is on one side, signal's on the other side. So make sure you get those in the right order. Now I need to find number one. There's number one. And number two should be in this other set. And number three. So now I've got all my motors connected. The wire's nice and sort of twisted in there. I like that. Um, I'm gonna end up making space for the other thing there, and the speakers will go there. That'll all tuck down in there fine. Now, while I'm down here, I'm going to turn this robot around. I've got two power lines here, right? So um, five volts in ground and five volts in ground. This one goes up to this sensor here, right? So it needs power. Um, and this one goes back to the infrared sensor, which we'll connect up in a second. So I'm pulling um, power for these two off of this board, um, the same power that's supplying the motors. It's still a regulated five volts. I could use a regulated five volts off the Arduino instead, um, but it's kind of more difficult to cable up there. I just like that, that I can cable it to the center block here, even just for power, and I don't think the motors will care um, if these two little sensors, which take virtually no power by comparison, are also sharing, um, sharing their power line. So, so I'm just putting these on here as if they're motors, but remember, there's no signal line so that all we're really pulling from here is power. And I can put it to any number because I'm not controlling anything with these. Just grabbing power. Now these two lines up here are for the Raspberry Pi, which we'll get to in a whole other video, so I'm just going to tuck those down. And continuing to the back, we've got the last thing to connect up with, which is our Arduino, which is where most of these things come. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is um, connect the power. This is the power, if we remember, that came off of the switch. This should go down and connect right to the power switch. And you should get yourself a very good map of your Arduino Nano. The pins are labeled, but you want to probably get yourself a good drawing and refer to that just to double check everything. So the power is these first two pins on the bottom, power then ground, power supply then ground. So this, see this power connector here? This is a power supply to your sensor, which we just connected to this line down here. So make sure you don't actually connect that up to your board, right, as a power supply. This is the power supply to the sensor. It's two different together. The other one is the power supply that goes to the switch. 
right? Make sure you get that right, because it'll appear to work, but it won't be right. This is our I2C bus. So we again have five volts. So now we need five volts out of the Arduino. And five volts out of the Arduino happens to be the fourth pin on the bottom here. And the ground that we're gonna connect to happens to be the fourth pin on the top. Just double checking that. Now, remember, we decided that our yellow line is SCL and our orange line is SDA. So the SCL on um, is A5. So it's one of those things you just gotta look up, make sure it's true on your Arduino. On this Nano, that's true. A5 is way down here. And then A4 right next to it is the SDA, the actual data line for your I2C. Now we've got these two data lines. The purple line is to this sensor up front here, and the blue line is to our um, Raspberry Pi. If you're never gonna connect to Raspberry Pi, then don't bother running this blue line. Okay, so all of these pins, um, I've just used the data lines, just first to last, the first data line um, for this infrared sensor, second data line for our um, distance infrared sensor on the front. Um, I skipped the third line and then used the fourth line to receive from the Raspberry Pi. I, I had two lines here, I originally used the third line um, to send to the Raspberry Pi, but I've just decided we never send to the Raspberry Pi. Um, I'll talk about that much later, um, but you know, I could in a future design send signal back to the Raspberry Pi. Um, I would have to have included a, 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 a voltage, a minor voltage step up, step down, because Raspberry Pi is three volts, the Arduino is five volts, so I'd have to have included one of those in here as well. Just figured it wasn't necessary. We'll just receive from the Raspberry Pi. And the Raspberry Pi will send three volts and the Arduino will be just fine receiver, listening at a three volt signal. All right, so let's back off here. This is as much um, wiring together as I'm gonna do right now. Um, again, I've just got this, I want my uh, infrared sensor just sort of sitting here for now. The next thing we will do is go ahead and power it up and just give it a test. I suggest you run through this whole thing again one more time. Make sure all of your five volt lines are connected to the right spot. Um, if you got that reversed or reversed on any of these sensors, the sensor's gonna get ruined or your Arduino could be ruined or one of the boards could be ruined. So just double check, particularly the five volt and ground line um, on all your connections before you uh, supply power. And that's the first thing we'll do in the next video.